are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. Yay! Hi, I'm Sarah Connor, and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah. On today's show, I have invited Maureen Hazley Jones, the English lady, out to my home to help me plan for a new endeavor, planting a summer vegetable garden. Once we have the plan, we're actually going to go out to the community garden plot that I've rented for the season and show you how to prepare the soil and the garden beds in an organic way for a successful growing season. Maureen, thank you for joining me. You're welcome, Sarah. It's lovely to be here with you and to be with all of our viewers again in the garden, right? I mean, what can be bad with this weather? I know. Right? We're taking it on the road. Yes, <laughs> we are. I love that. And the, the fact that we're going to be talking about vegetables, too. Vegetables and fruits and your first-time endeavor. Well, I've done it once in the past, but it was a long time ago, mm -hmm. and it wasn't organic, I have to admit. Ah, so I'm very ah. excited to do it organically right. and to do it right. Mm -hmm. So I thought, who else to ask to help me get everything set up mm -hmm. right from the start? So what is the first thing we need to do? The first thing you'll need to do is decide what size of a garden that you're going to do. Okay. Uh, a garden for a family of four, you know, could be 16 by 24. That makes sense. But I believe yours... <laughs> Is, uh, is like, what, 10 by 20 or more? It's actually even bigger. I've really bitten off kind of a big chunk. You're I have rented a community garden. Right. So it's out at Buena Vista. The community garden's out um, just past the Cornerstone mm -hmm. um, swimming area. All right. And it's a 20 by 20 plot. You had suggested breaking it up into, into plots. beds, right? Right, right. So exactly. talk a little bit about what, a, what you want to do with okay. the beds. Okay, within your, your, your plot... Um, you're going to have, your bed should be like about six by four, is that what okay. they are? Um, kind of like that? I, well, because it's 20 by 20, mm. so I cheated and I did a little bit of homework All ahead right. of time. Good. Um, I put together a plot with seven by five feet All beds. right, great. So a little bit bigger than six by okay, four. Okay, okay. Um, I'm ambitious. <laughs> Excellent. Now, you've, so. got, you, you've also, uh, what I can see here, too, is you have got a, a, a main pathway that's about the three feet wide. Yes, and that the, was on your recommendation. Right. The, re the, the pathway needs to be that wide, um, just that one pathway to do with the, the wheelbarrow going along, where you're going to have mulch or, and manure and right. all of the other good stuff in it as well. Yes. You know, okay. so that's, but the, the pathways between the beds, mm -hmm. um, two feet is plenty. Okay. However, about that. however, what you should also do is you will quarter or each of your um, your plots okay. with a very narrow, you know, just so that you can you can creep along in in in, in the in the okay. bed um, to do with leaning in and weeding or okay. harvesting. In okay. as much as because seven feet off, you're not going to be able to reach across kind no. of thing. Um, you can from the one side and from that side, but you won't be able to. To reach middle. into the middle. Okay. And you won't want to have any extra, what I call, labor than, than, than you actually, you know, that you okay. really uh, want to do. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of weeding to do and a lot of, you know, careful keeping an eye out for bugs and, and all of that kind right. of stuff. So allow for some space. Allow for some space. Okay. And the first thing to do is, um, and I'll, I'll say to my viewers out here too, in your own gardens, um, if this is a first time vegetable garden, your best idea is to uh, till it by hand, mm -hmm. really, mean, you know, literally work it with the small prong tiller. Uh, but first of all, you need to get out all of the weeds by hand because any little bit left in, in, in the soil will just reproduce and you'll yeah. have many, many, many more. It'll grow like weeds. It will <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Stick so to your day job. Like <laughs> right. So. All right. But no anyway. stand-up comedian jobs. Right, right. So first of all, till it. Make sure that that soil is nice and loose. And of course, for, for the folks out there too, make sure that you have at least a six-foot high fence. Um, you know, a, a tall one because deer are a problem. Make sure too that there's a water source close there by. There is a water source, Okay. Yes. 
And, and, and the other thing is, too, when you have, um, you know, got all the weeds out, mm -hmm. you know, made sure that the soil is lovely and loose, that's when you'll add your manure. Okay. Now, the, uh, you will probably be using, and probably most of the folks out there, will be using bagged manure, mm -hmm. composted manure, from the garden centers. Yes. Yes. And really work it into the soil. You mm -hmm. know, um, normally you wouldn't need to. You could lay it on top of your, you know, your, your uh, uh, regular borders with flowers and shrubs. You could lay the, the manure on top. Mm -hmm. But with the vegetable garden, you'll need to work it into work the soil, in. down at least into the first four, uh, four to six inches. Okay, so that brings up a question right. of tools. So because I'm a newbie, I mean, I have some garden tools, but I wouldn't say they're spectacular. Mm -hmm. So what are the tools that I should get before we go out and start doing this? Well, first of all, you'll need a small wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, you'll need a small okay. wheelbarrow and you'll need gloves. And I suggest the, thing, the gloves to use are the farmer's gloves, which are a soft leather, but mm -hmm. they're, they're washable and they last a long time. Okay. And um, then um, you will also need a basket for carrying small stuff around mm -hmm. in, like your water bottle and bug spray, or the, only an organic uh, bug spray, right. of course. You know, and a little notebook, because you'll want to take notes on, you know, okay, how is this one doing? When is, is th this one coming along? Oh, mm -hmm. this one is ri ripe and ready now. So that in a few years, it'll become second nature. Uh, you know, right, so you. I can remind myself right. when I did things You'll and also what need a spade. Okay. All right, and a um, uh, and a fork, okay. As well as a um, um, and of course you'll need the the little um, what I call the weeder, the pronged weeder. Right. So right. there's the the fork is like the pitchfork. The pitchfork. Which you yes. can get down in right. and dig up, and right. then there's the hand fork. Yes. Which is yes. like the Just three the small, tongs yes. that you kind of. You'll right, also okay. need a small trowel, and I like the one that's like a mason's trowel, mm -hmm. which is uh, with a pointed end to it. You know, this way, okay. yeah, this way uh, it, it's much easier for getting out, you know, the odd, um, you know, stubborn weed, so to speak. Right, you can get all the way down. Exactly, exactly. Okay. You also okay. need a rake, you okay. know, a uh, regular rake so that you can smooth the soil because, you know, you want it to look attractive. Mm -hmm. After, the, you know, you've used them for the day, uh, wipe them off and then, you know, put, you know, especially the spade and the fork, you know, put, put them in a bucket of sand which acts like new... Um, a sandpaper okay. and, and you know get all the, the you know the muck and mire off them so okay. that they will last and the other thing is to um, at least once every couple of weeks rub the wooden handles uh, of, the, of the, the tools with um, with like a vegetable oil because okay, so this they don't way dry out. well so they don't dry out and you won't get splinters either oh, that's yes good. exactly okay. but for the most part though uh, folks put uh, leave your gloves on okay it's much the best okay. idea and um, where were we? So we talked about tools. Yes, you talked about tools. Did you have a recommendation on a book? So for me, I, I, I think my viewers now know I do a lot of research before I do every right. show. I like to collect the books. Right. I like to collect the websites. Right. You had recommended a book. Um, yes. Which yes. We both, we, you have your personal copy. I've right. Got the, I right. quickly checked it out at the library. Uh, the, the, R Rodale's all-new encyclopedia of organic gardening. Okay. And there's a wonderful section, I think it's in about page 500 and something, mm -hmm. all about, you know, vegetable gardens, including the seeds, you know, when right. to plant certain seeds. This is a book that I've used. Mm -hmm. um, it's called The Vegetable Gardener's Bible. It's not an encyclopedia, but it's, a, it's mm -hmm. the Bible. Right. Um, and he, he has in the back sort of an encyclopedia of all the different vegetables mm -hmm. and then what good companions are, which yes. I think is what you're getting at. Exactly. Like there are things that grow well together mm -hmm. and things that don't grow well together. Right, right. Um, so this is another one that I'm planning on referencing when I kind of plan out where I put things. Mm -hmm. um, well, good. As well as the encyclopedia. Well, also, too, you know, um, hopefully that, the, you know, the community garden will be all ready for you to work you know, in a few weeks. In fact, we'll be mm -hmm. go, you know, um, you know, we'll be doing all of that stuff on location. I'm so looking forward to it. Too. I know. Well, right. we're, I've, rumor right. is it's being tilled mm -hmm. and um, we're taping this first segment. This is our planning portion. Right. Um, and then I'm going to go gather all those things that Maureen has suggested right. I have mm -hmm. and then we're going to go out and do it. Exactly. Make sure so. also to add a hose to your, to your list too. Yes. Well, I think I've got my plan. Mm -hmm. I've got my resources. Good. I have your suggestions. Right. So I'm going to go get all of these things ready mm -hmm. over the next few weeks. And right. then I am going to meet Maureen in Buena Vista Community Gardens. So we'll see you there. We'll have a wonderful time. I think so. Yes, we will.
Maureen and I are now in Buena Vista Community Garden and this is my very own piece of land to garden and as you can see I have divided it into the six beds that we talked about when we were doing our planning portion of the show. Um, we may adjust things a little bit now that Maureen's come out to see it but um, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what we're going to do to the soil, uh, demonstrate that and then we're going to talk a little bit about going the next step and where we're going to put some of the plants and the natural and organic um, pest control and soil amendment. It's Maureen, excellent. thank you for coming. You're welcome, Sarah. I Getting mean, what a lovely day, isn't it, today? It is right? fantastic. And, and I must admit, your soil looks lovely and loose, and Good. I know that you tested it first. The soil for a vegetable garden, full sun, six to eight hours, yep. and uh, lovely and loose, and a pH of 6.5 to 7. For vegetables. So, yes, for vegetables, absolutely. Yep. Yep. And uh, it, it looks absolutely great. And I know that you you weeded it as much by hand as you could. Yes, and um, it's, it's tough. There are a lot of teeny tiny little weeds, but I did the best I could. Exactly, because any mm -hmm. rootstock will just, uh, you mm -hmm. know, reproduce like crazy. And um, we have got um, uh, compost. Of yes. course, you raise the beds, which is marvelous, because uh, raised beds are good for drainage. You need to have good drainage for uh, vegetable mm -hmm. gardens, and well, for all gardens, actually. But uh, this is great okay. with, the, with the compost, and you've got lots of manure in there as well. Yes, each bed right. has 160 pounds of cow manure. That's marvelous. So I'm getting some muscles while we're doing this. Oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I was just smelling and feeling the soil before. It smelled yeah. wonderful. And you know, manure is my favorite yes. stuff. So it's, yeah, uh, yeah excellent, excellent. So um, what are we going to do? At the, oh, I see you have some logs too. The yeah. logs will be, you know, along the path and uh, so that the ground beetle can hide underneath it because the ground beetle eats slugs, those horrible little creatures. So put... And I think you said they should be bigger. Should be bigger, bigger. and it can be a rock or a log. Okay, yeah, and then just right. put them periodically. Yes, along I mean, the just a couple path. of them. Oh, you know, yeah, okay. yeah. Not so that you're tripping over logs and rocks all the time, because okay. that's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. So what are we going to do now? Okay. So this bed is weeded, mm -hmm. and it's been raised as much as I could. Okay. So we're going to demonstrate adding the manure and the compost, yes. and then a couple of other soil amenders that you would recommend. Excellent. So I am going to get started on adding the manure. All right, and make sure you wear gloves. Because again, manure, good for the soil and the plants, bacteria, not good for you. Okay, All right. so I'm gonna get my gloves on. All right, and the gloves too, it's a good idea if um, w with the gloves that you uh, scrape your, your, your nails in some soap and um, maybe put a little hand cream on and then put on uh, one of these gloves, like this, you know, like I used to wear in the olden days with my suits, and um, then um, inside the, um, the lovely glove. And okay. this way, when you finish, your hands will come out, your nails will come out clean, and your hands will stay lovely and soft. Excellent. That's lovely, potent stuff, Sarah. Good. Wonderful potent stuff. And I know that you're bending your knees when you do this and you stretch this morning and uh, you'll stretch later on in the day because, um, you know, with, with us humans, our backs, we, we were never meant to be upright. Right. That's anyway, nice. but um, let me, wait, I'll take those. Okay. I'll put it over here. And then you'll, um, again, everything needs to be cleaned up later in the day because yes. a clean garden is a healthy garden. So oh. this is three bags of manure. Um, and then I'm just going to spread it around, right, Maureen? This right. Is right. What I'm doing is a that's good thing. it. So you just sort of add another layer to the soil. Right, right. And what you could do instead of um, the fork to do with the spreading uh -huh. around, you could use a rake. Okay. Um, you know, just to, just to spread it a little bit, and it doesn't matter if it goes, um, you know, over the side, etc. Too. Right. This and is then a you're nice going to nice thick layer. And you're going to put compost in here as well. Yep. So the first thing is the manure. That's right. But you can mix the manure and compost, okay. you know, together. Oh, right, right, right. 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 Okay. But you've got three bags of manure in this bed, and this yes. bed is about a six by four. Uh, uh, about, yeah, yeah. approximately. It looks at, which is an yeah. ideal size for a, uh, for a bed. And again, folks, you've noticed we're doing beds, not rows, because you get more pro productivity from beds, um, et cetera. And the, the ratio is, uh, three to one to do with compost, uh, to do with manure, and one to do with the compost. 
Okay, All so right. we've done the manure. Right. I'm gonna go get some compost. Keep watching. This is West Hartford Town Compost. So if you're Excellent. a West Hartford resident, you just go down to Brixton Road and uh, show your ID and you can have as much as you want. You just have to haul it. And any of you folks who are um, getting this show online, which I know that you can do, um, many towns have compost facilities that you can get this, yes. this great stuff from. Yes, so this is, this is not quite as much as the manure, but you said it shouldn't be as much It shouldn't as the be, no, no, so. the manure is the main stuff. Okay. Of course, that's because, not really because I'm partial, it's because manure is the, the main stuff it's not a fertilizer. It builds the structure of the soil. Okay, now, now we have our manure, we have right. our compost. Now, do we add, there's two things you told me to add, lime and bone meal. Right. Do we do that after we mix? You will do that two weeks before you plant. Okay. okay? So I would imagine you'll be putting um, seeds down and maybe next week. Yeah, right? so we should go ahead. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so okay. there's, there you so are. Right. Add. I would suggest, though, first of all, that you um, mix some of this in first. Okay. Uh, all right, because you don't need the bone meal and the lime to go too too far down. Oh, okay. All right. The okay. the nutrients for all of the vegetables here will be in the first four to six inches. Okay. okay? So that will be fine. So now tell me if I'm. This is how I was right. mixing on my own. Okay. I kind of put the shovel down. Mm -hmm. Or the fork. Fork. All right. And I just turned it over. Right. Again, being careful of my back. Mm -hmm. And this is called and a spading fork. And by the way, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can get uh, these days, because a lot of us ladies are, um, uh, you know, doing, doing uh, gardening, vegetable gardening, of course we've always done it, but, but um, you can get tools fit for your hands and for your height, etc. So um, you don't have to have one, you know, one that's uh, uh, you know, five feet long. There we go. Oh, Wonderful. Wonderful. And okay, folks, keep. do not um, work soil if it's too wet or too dry. Okay, because you can spoil the soil structure. You're adding too much oxygen then, and don't over cultivate. Okay. Over cultivating means what, Maureen? Over cultivating means that you're digging it up, to, uh, digging it too much. So just okay. one time of this mix. So you don't know, keep mixing, mixing, No, mixing, don't mixing. keep mixing. Okay. And um, the, you'll, uh, when you've done this and you, you've got the, uh, the bone meal and the lime in here, you will have, um, uh, you, you'll take any extra debris out, you know, any yeah. little uh, uh, root stock that you can see or uh, yeah. rocks, etc. Seems like every time I turn it, turn, start turning it, more weeds pop up. Well, yes, and also stones. I mean, but this is yeah. Connecticut, Yankee field potatoes, yep. anyway, so... Um, okay, so now we're mixed. Exactly. All right, now okay. the thing to do is um, you will... Uh, do you have a rake handy? Do we have a rake handy? We do have a rake. All um, right. We will get our rake. All right, we'll, so. and then you'll rake it. Okay. A, a little. First, you'll take out some of these lumps of, of, of mess, uh, de debris. Okay. And um, then you'll get a rake. You'll rake it lightly, and then we will sprinkle the, the lime and the, uh, the bone meal uh, on the top. Okay, so I've turned the soil over and now Maureen has said to rake it. Just to, you, yeah, see you know how nice, yeah, gently, gently rake. And this rake is compliments of Tom, another community gardener. Exactly, so exactly. One of the benefits of being out with lots of other gardeners. Right, they to, share. to have a chat and yeah. to share stories, uh, find out what um, grows well in this particular area here. Um, also, what is disease resistant? Um, you know, all of these things important. And I'm picking um, up the even to do yes. with what I call planting time. And of course, planting time this year is later um, because normally the um, um, the frost date was April 15th, but because of the very cold weather, um, I had suggested to people that they move it until um, April 22nd. Okay. And um, yeah. So looks it's, lovely. Looks it's May, so it's a little bit later than. Yes, it is. So you can start planting, except for things like tomatoes. Yes, you'll you you'll have plant, yeah. you'll plant your cold crop right. now. Cold you crop. know yep. your spinach, beets, lettuce, um, and you know with seeds too. Seeds soak overnight in manure tea. Go to the website theenglishlady.com and you'll get the recipe for manure yes. tea, and then um, just scatter very very thinly, not not heavily. 
and you will um, press the seeds gently down into the soil with your hands. Do not plant the seeds any deeper than it says on the package. Okay, because I won't germinate. Excellent. Right. Okay, well, I'm going to give Tom his rake back and then we'll put in some of those soil additives. Okay, so now we are going to be adding bone meal. Bone meal, which yes. Which is an organic um, supplement. For, right, it's a, it's a supplement. Okay. It's a mineral supplement. Okay. Well, actually, bone meal isn't. It's an animal supplement. Then you're going to be adding lime, which is a mineral uh, okay. supplement. And you're, you've got, um, for this uh, uh, square footage, which is about six by four, uh -huh. you've got eight handfuls. And yep. you're just sprinkling that over the top. And you're not going to um, mix this in. So this does not get mixed in? No, this does not get mixed in. Yeah. And um, what you would need, folks, obviously, with a vegetable garden, you would need um, a fence because mm -hmm. bone meal will attract, you know, the animals to come and, 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 and munch a little bit or nose a little bit on the, um, on the bone meal. Okay, so that's part one is the bone meal. Right. Okay, now the second part is the lime. Lime. Mm -hmm. A soil amendment. And that's for the pH, right? Right. Okay. And this is two weeks before planting. Two weeks before planting, right. so not earlier. Right. And you need to give it time to kind of settle in, right, before you put your... Exactly. And this is pelletized, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit easier to deal with. Exactly. Exactly. And it's all organic, mm -hmm. of course. The community gardens in West Hartford are well, we're all organic. Right, and I'm hoping that everyone yeah. will only use organic. Right. Throw away all herbicides and pesticides. There's absolutely no need to use them. And then what, what will happen, uh, Sarah, after this is you will lightly water okay. so that uh, we'll attach to a spigot and um, not the mister like we will use to do with, with the seeds, okay. but, but uh, whatever other is the other gentle setting, okay. just to, uh, to moisten it so that it will seep down nicely. Okay. All right. So we have, we've amended our soil for mm -hmm. everything that we need to amend it. Right. We are close to a water source. Excellent. Which is excellent. excellent. So that will be the next step. Mm -hmm. um, and should we talk a little bit about planting? Yes, we can, but also to do with the water source. For, okay. For the folks out there who are not in community garden, who are in their own garden, um, in my own garden, I use um, soaker hoses. You know, you put soaker hoses. The first year, it's, it's difficult because there's a lot of this kind of prep. But then, when all of this is done, I lay in soaker hoses because the good, the uh, nutrition, the the, the uh, water goes right to the roots of the plant. It's not on the foliage, and the, you 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 don't have disease. So that's uh, that's good. Give me some advice on when to plant and what to plant where. Okay. First of all, you will your cold uh, crop seeds will go in first. Mm -hmm. Spinach, beets. You know, lettuce, all of that kind peas. of stuff. Peas, definitely. Things that are not right. Sensitive exactly, okay. exactly. And then later on, you will, uh, you know, the carrots will go in, and the tomatoes, and all of that kind of good stuff. Eggplant, if you're going to plant eggplant. But of course, with around all of this uh, uh, garden, you'll need to have fragrant um, uh, plants. Fragrance uh, keeps away the insects. And if you have sunflowers, which are going to be along the back here, okay, yep, and I marigolds, going. right? Yep. So the, those plants, the sunflowers and the marigolds, will attract the lacewing bug, which, okay. which eats aphids and white flies, all right? And um, then you will have um, all kinds of other wonderful uh, fragrant stuff. Um, lavender, cosmos, um, for the folks of you out there who already have a veg garden with a lovely fence, around the outside of the fence you can have um, honeysuckle. Okay, which, uh, and now that's a permanent plant, it's so a per that's only if you have a permanent... Exactly, fence. that's why I'm right. talking about yep. the folks who right. are and not... Right. Exactly. And uh, yeah, and, and I suggest a honeysuckle called Berry's Jubilee. It blooms twice in a season mm -hmm. and it's wonderfully fragrant and it is absolutely marvelous. Um, again, make sure that you read the package as to when it gives the planting time, you know, on the, on the package. Never any deeper than they say. And to do with spacing, yes. you, have the, the, uh, you, you plant, have the seeds thinly, but um, to do with the diameter, the width apart, is to do with the diameter of the seed, not the depth of the seed, okay? Not the, how, how uh, thin or, or fat the seed is. It's the, uh, it, I'm sorry, it's the width of it. Is, is how far apart you would uh, plant the seeds. Okay. Okay? All right. Um, where are we? Planting, yeah, the cold crop. After, with, with the cold crop, 
after you, you've planted the first time and you're going to say reseed later on, the best bet though is to put where you had that crop is to put in legumes, you know, like the, the beans, you know, and, and all of that kind of thing, because beans will um, uh, put nitrogen back in the soil, which okay, is what you'll need so to do. Okay, so that naturally re amends the soil. Yes, it does. From but, what's taken. Okay. And also, of course, you're going to make sure you keep weeding throughout the season. A clean garden is a healthy garden, and you're going to mulch all of these gardens with a nice thick layer of manure. And uh, I don't have any shares in manure farms, by the way, folks. You don't have a if, bunch of cows no, making some no, manure No, no, I don't. For you. <laughs> but, but also, the yield will be marvelous in these gardens. And manure um, is a wonderful mulch because it doesn't form a crust. So you don't get what that, that crust is called capping. Mm -hmm. That means air can get through and water can get through to the roots of the plant. And um, when you plant, you know, you can also, when you get plants from the garden center, make sure they've been hardened off which means they've come from greenhouse to coal frame and then outside. And you can plant in this lovely loose mix, this fertile mix, your plants so they're touching. And if they're touching, um, it's, um, of course, you get more. And plus, it's uh, a weed control because it's shading the weeds down there and it's keeping moisture in the soil as well. So if you get, let's say you get a, a, some tomatoes seedlings, you can plant them so the seedlings are touching or so that they eventually will touch? No, you, if, if folks are starting from seed, then, then uh, you, they know the size that tomato plant's going to be. Right. But the other thing to do with things like tomatoes and peppers, buy smaller size varieties. You'll okay. get more on each plant with the smaller size. You know, you the, mean the fruits are smaller. The fruits size. are smaller size. Okay. Yes, that's a that's a very good idea. Okay. And um, in among all of this, um, you can have your annual herbs too, because yes, they're I'm all excited about that. Yeah, yeah, they're also fragrant, which will keep uh, help keep away the uh, the insects. Okay. All right. And the books that we talked about in our planning portion have lots of information. Marvelous. On planting time and depth and. Exactly. That Ray's Rodale best. book mm -hmm. is, is, is really wonderful. It's, it's, uh, and it's clear and concise, easy to follow. Okay. Well, Maureen, right. I'm excited because next time you're in my garden, it's going to be lush and green and full of produce, I hope. Oh, it will be. <laughs> uh, and believe me, I'm going, to be I'm, confident. I'm going to be following up on you. You know, I uh, know, when I'm up in the area, I'm going to stop by. And by the way, too, um, uh, an organic, uh, another organic bug control is if you see something that's that's nipped by the fragrant things, um, you can use the um, one gallon spray container, gallon of water, a, a squirt of dish soap, soap a, a teaspoon of vegetable oil, and three crushed garlic cloves. Spray that on the leaves that you see are being chomped a bit, okay. and it'll keep those away. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Good. Well, and of course, we, we also need to oh. talk about the fence. Good high fence with the chicken wire at the bottom, the chicken wire at least six to eight inches in the ground so that that stops the little critters from come, uh, getting underneath. Okay. All right? Okay. Excellent. Oh, it's going to be marvelous, Sarah. I'm very excited. Yes. And I, I, am, I am. I'm very, very excited. I have plenty of space. Mm -hmm. The girls are going to pick their plot to grow what they want to grow. Corn, and, right? Yeah, they right. want to do corn. Corn at the back here, too, again, because they get very tall yep. and you don't want them shading out the other plants. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. So Maureen, thank you once again for joining me. You're welcome. Sharing your knowledge. It's been a pleasure. Digging in the dirt with me. We finally got our hands on some of that manure you've been And I about. hope that you give me a little of your bounty as Absolutely. we go along. There we'll we go. We'll have you over for a fresh grown There salad. we go. <laughs> <laughs> you've been watching Life in Style with Sarah. I'm Sarah Connor. If you want more information about planting your garden, you can go to the www.theenglishlady.com. Maureen has all sorts of good information posted there. If you want more information about having your own community garden, um, if you call Westmore Park, they are in charge of all of the garden plots and helping you get started. Thanks for watching and don't forget to tune in next month to a brand new episode of Life and Style with Sarah.